Hello everyone, I am Professor Damodaran from the Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore. I am here to talk to you about India and climate change. More specifically, I have been asked to address three important questions. I'll take it one by one. The first question is, what India has done after the Paris Agreement was signed? I would say that the, my answer cannot be very straightforward. I have to go to the essential nature of the Paris Agreement. Well, the Paris Agreement is a treaty, but unlike a regular treaty where the shalls should dominate the shoulds, the Paris Agreement puts shoulds on very key issues and shalls on not so very key issues. Now, what I mean is, the economy-wide emission targets. The Paris Agreement fights shy on this. So most of the developed countries did not want a concrete obligation to be taken up here. Now contrast this with what India has done in the run-up to the Paris Agreement as well as in the wake of the Paris Agreement. India, India in, intended national contribution document which you call it INCD in UNFCCC parlance. It's a very ambitious document. And like any government document, it covers everything under the sun. And yet, I see four elements which provide the salience to our climate change action programs in the wake of the Paris Agreement. The first is the emphasis on renewable energy. The second one, is the emphasis on clean energy. The third one is on energy efficiency. And the fourth one, which is very decisive, is on sustainable low carbon urban ecosystems. To me, this provides the much needed salience to India's action programs on climate change after the Paris Agreement. Now, this is very interesting because uh, these four aspects are areas in which we have been having substantial public investments and private investments happening in the past three years. The whole issue is how to green it. Renewable energy has got considerable focus. The rates, the unit costs have come down. You take clean energy, again considerable amount of investments have been happening. Urban ecosystems are in for a very big change thanks to the smart city initiative and urban development steps which have been taken. And these, in my view, once integrated with low carbon concerns, promises an explosion of sorts in the area of low carbon technologies. That's how I would end the first question. So I am optimistic. I'm also cautiously optimistic that India would do a good job as far as implementing the Paris Agreement is concerned. Now let me come to the second question. The second question is whether the Paris Agreement will be the harbinger of innovations and whether this will be driven by undertakings or it would be driven by public-private partnerships. Now this is again a difficult question to answer because the, the scenario is very complex as far as climate change, low carbon technologies are concerned. The scenario is complex for the simple reason that the sectors are so heterogeneous that you can't have one single answer on what will be the, bis the, what will be the innovation model, what will be the business model which will drive the innovations. Now let me make it very simple. Contrary to what experts think, contrary to what climate policy makers think, India's greatest innovation driver in climate change would be the demand side management systems. Now this is very underrated and understated in policy documents. Now when I say demand side management, I mean India's great efforts in giving a big fillip to sensor technologies, 
the Internet of Things, which is taking over the urban space. And if you notice, a slew of uh, IoT technologies have come out from startups based in India. And these startups are based on substantial capital investments. And yet, they carry proprietary technology, which will have a very big role to play in the days to come. So to answer your question, or the question that is posed to me, I would say that innovations are going to happen in demand side management, which is related to what the IN uh, document says, energy efficiency. Now let me take you to a different direction to answer the second question on the business models. Take at least three sectors where action is to happen. The first sector is called the waste to energy sector, which is very typical of urban cities. Now waste to energy technologies have been commercialized in India based on a public-private partnership. But I'm afraid that this has not really worked. In the days to come, waste to energy technologies can take roots only if one of them take over and run it. This is my view. Now let us come to the second sector, carbon sinks. Now this is a very ambitious target for India's climate action program in the wake of the Paris Agreement. Now the, the carbon sink initiative, in my view, would be entirely driven by the forest departments of the state governments as well as the central government. Now there is no scope for any private involvement here. And if you look further down and look at the IoT, the Internet of Things and sensor technologies, this will be entirely driven by the private sector. So in my view, public-private partnerships as far as climate change is concerned is passe. It is not going to happen. It is either private or public. It cannot be both. Having said this, I should also tell you that the unfolding scene is going to be extremely interesting. I foresee that in the days to come, municipalities and corporations will be under pressure to reinvent themselves, technologically equip themselves, and take up the big issues in urban environmental planning head on. Now let me come to the third question that is posed to me on what are the most critical challenges that India is facing on low carbon pathways in the wake of the Paris Agreement. Well, I would say there are two issues. One is the urban sustainability and urban low carbon issue. It's going to be a major problem. India is going to have a population of 600 million by 2030. That's a whopping number. Currently, we are at 333 million. So see the exponential jump that will happen in just next 13 years. And therefore, the challenge of low carbon initiatives in urban areas is going to be very, very daunting. The other challenge that I foresee is in the rural areas, where the pressure will be on developing biological and natural tools to address climate change issues. Now, let me clarify this a little bit. Our economies, especially the rural economies of India, are in a very bad shape because of the drain of biological capital, biodiversity particularly. Biodiversity is the base for livelihoods of the rural populations in India. And but the big initiatives in low carbon sector is going to happen through equipments, know-how and technological innovation surrounding them. They do not try to capitalize the biological capital of villages and turn it into a low carbon advantage. In my view, this will be a challenge. This is something which we need to address because if we, uh, we have to address this because we have to see that there is a convergence of sorts between our climate change concerns and biodiversity concerns. And on that will rest the prosperity of rural livelihoods. I'm talking of small farmers, I'm talking of marginal farmers, and I'm also talking of the landless laborers. 
who still, much against the big pressures developed on them, would not like to migrate to cities, given a chance. That's all for the present. Thank you so much.